Hello, everybody, and welcome to another interview. I have not done one in, like, a year. I apologize for that. Um, school has gotten in the way. I'm trying to go to college. Um, <laughs> I am here joined by an artist some of you guys may know, some of you might not know, uh, Mattstagram. Uh, you want to introduce yourself? Hello. Hi, I'm Mattstagram. <laughs> Deal with it. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, some of his most well-known songs you probably heard around TikTok. Got the autism, I'm soft, and I'm gonna feel so. Oh, gotta be uh, st for stay. Oh my god, I'm oh I feel so stupid right now. <laughs> no, you're good. You're I feel good. so you know stupid what? right now. Uh, gotta be productive. It's, oh my god, that's yeah. like literally the most popular song. Why don't I know that? <laughs> <laughs> it's you know what? It's Saturday. I think both both of our brains are scrambled. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah why don't you tell us about the development process of uh one of those songs um okay i i honestly i can tell you the development to all three of those songs we'll get, um we'll get into the development process of prescribe whatever that record in like the first question the first main question i'm just like if you want to go into detail about the other two yeah, yeah. Um, so for Gotta Be Productive, the funny thing about that song was it was never supposed to be a song. It was literally just supposed to be a bit on the internet. And so I decided to like actually like record my vocal like, you know, through my home studio setup because I was like, yeah, like I'll be able to like layer on like a bunch of vocals and make it sound like a, a panic thing. And then by the time I did the second pass, I was like, this kind of needs guitar. So... I just, I made it into like a 30 second clip of like, you know, like a, so a song. And then I put it on the internet and everyone was like, please make a full version. And so I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not going to say no, you know, like, <laughs> like, yeah. So that's, that's kind of where that song came out of. And then, um, or like, I'm soft and got the autism. It was like kind of the same thing, except like, you know, I do a lot of like musical content. Um, and I just, every now and then I just throw something up that I think is like, you know, oh, like this is kind of like a, a funny thing I'm saying about myself, you know, like, uh, by the way, I'm a soft little guy or like, hey, I'm on the spectrum, you know? Yeah. And like, you kind of never know which of those things people are going to like gravitate to because I do tons of these things, you know, like I, I, I get, I find a lot of enjoyment out of like entertaining people. Um, so like, yeah, it's just whenever something gets popular enough and I feel like it could make a good song. Like I just, I go ahead and I finish the thought, you know? Yeah. And, um, I remember when I heard, uh, got the autism it was it was a little it was a little bit after i heard um the song prescribe whatever and i was like blown away by that um i i was following I your did. channel you came out with that song and i was like oh my god this is absolutely hilarious and i showed it to my mom and she thought it was like hilarious also nice nice yeah i had a lot of parents <laughs> of uh people on the spectrum like reach out to me too and they were like i love this yeah. like my my kid loves this like thank you so much and i was like i was like yeah i mean i didn't even mean for this to like be as big of a thing as it is but like it you know it means it means a lot to me that it means a lot to you you know yeah i'm on the spectrum as well most likely so you know that song no kidding also has some extra yeah also has some extra meaning i mean if you couldn't tell i was you know a little bit weird at the show but uh otherwise <laughs> um, nah, i didn't i didn't think so i didn't think so i was i was feeding off of your energy honestly i was like <laughs> i was like this dude's stoked i'm stoked like let's fucking go you know <laughs> all right well, i love that yeah thank you thank you all right well let's get into our first like real question <laughs> um what cool was, <laughs> what was the concept of prescribe whatever the the record um, so I like to say that, like, whenever I'm, like, writing a record, because, like, I have two as Mattstagram, and I've done a bunch of stuff in a bunch of older bands and stuff, like, when I'm writing a record or an EP or anything, like, I don't really go into it with, like, a real big overarching theme in mind ever. Like, the theme just kind of is a snapshot of where I am at that point. 
Um, and I've wanted to like do like concept records in the past before, but like, there's just, you know, it's the, the timing's just not right. Or like the idea is just not coming together. So, you know, um, like I, I really just think that prescribe whatever was just kind of like, for one, it was my first like label release as the artist Mattstagram. So like, I really wanted to just kind of like announce who I was immediately with something, um, and just put as much of my personality as I, I thought I could into it. Um, and also, you know, I mean, it was just kind of, a, again, you know, just a snapshot of where I was at in, you know, 2022, 21. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, that, uh, that, that makes sense. You know, I mean, you, of course, like, want to, uh, you know, put yourself onto the scene with, a, you know, a, you know, kick record. I thought it was great, um, but I Thank guess you. we could. I guess we could go like track by track. You did mention uh, how the development process of um, "Gotta Be Productive" went. Let's go into uh, "Still Hearing About It." That song, um, pretty good as well. Uh, what do you think? How did that? How did that uh, end up? You know, um, coming together. So I mean. Um that's kind of a difficult one to answer for me just because like um, a lot of like my songwriting process is kind of just like, it kind of just happens. It's just like, it, uh, like I'll have like a bunch of ideas and stuff that are just like floating around in my head. And like, I sort of have to just put them together in order for them to make sense. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but like, uh, yeah, I mean, no. I have to, I'm, I'm actually, working on a new record right now and um for this record i literally have a folder on my computer that is like fifth it, at this point there's like 50 or 60 demos in it and um i just picked like the the best like i, I don't want to like give the exact number or give anything away but like i just picked like a certain amount of, of songs that i was like these are the ones that i want to use mm -hmm. for my next record so um, really it's, it's like not even much of like a, a, well, it's not even a well thought out process. I'll just say that right now. Like, it's, yeah. it's like, not like, <laughs> you know, like I'm totally just throwing darts at a dartboard here, you know? Yeah. Um, do you, so you, I think I, I saw like one of your tweets, it was like still hearing about it is about, uh, like a comedian, I think. It's about one of the comedians. <laughs> uh, David Coulier. Yeah, um, David Coulier. I so uh, that's a meme. Yeah, that's it that's is. a meme. It is. It is. So like, um, so the whole the whole bit on that is that um, Alanis Morissette, if you've heard of her, mm -hmm. huge huge uh, solo singer songwriter artist in the '90s, and um, she had a song. Um, Oh my god, I'm drawing a blank on the name, but I'm sitting in front of my computer right now. But um, basically, like this song was very famously about David um, uh, David Coulier, who I'm not, not even sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly or not. Oh, you ought to know. That's the name of the song. You ought to know. Um, and so I just saw a bunch of other people going like, "Did you know that this famous song was by?" Uh, was was written about David Coulier too, and like you know, people just started piling onto the joke, and like, uh, like not one for for wanting to be outside of the joke. I just kind of was like, I can't live a lie anymore. <laughs> Still hearing about it was written about David Coulier. <laughs> um, well, it was it wasn't. Yeah, no. Um, I think it's. I mean, it has a pretty you know. I wouldn't say obvious meaning because it's a little bit mean, but it has a pretty clear message. Uh, I think it's a little mean. <laughs> um, I, if, if you're, if you're wondering, like it, it is about somebody that I used to hang out with a lot. And, um, you know, he and I just really bonded over like, well, we bonded over music and we bonded over like, you know, just like kind of general negativity. But then when you like bond over people with like about like negativity, once things start going positive in my pers in my personal experience, once things start going well for you, you don't have anything else to say with the, uh, to talk about with that person, you know. And it was just kind of like a situation where, like, every time we would like talk and like I'd be like, things are going well for me, you know, like, 
like I want to like talk to my friend about these things, but like I can't get them to stop talking about this thing that happened to them 10 years ago that like, it, if I'm being honest, like it didn't really happen. It wasn't, it didn't really happen to them. You know, it was just that I, I don't know how to explain the situation without uh, it basically like have to go in too much depth. Right. Gotcha. Like basically it was a situation that involved them, but like it wasn't necessarily this thing that like happened, happened to them, but like they couldn't get over it. And like, there's so many, so many days where like, I, you know, like we'd stay up late in the night, just talking about this one thing. And I just got so sick of that. I was like, I'm, I can't like, I, I love you, man, but like, I can't, I can't sit in the past with you, you know, like I've got yeah. to, I'm tr I'm trying to like move, you know, I mean, and I've got stuff from 10 years ago that I could be going on about how I got screwed and whatever, but like, you know, what, what good is that doing me when like, I, I, I have so many things that I want to do right now, you know, and like, he's in a good, a better place now. I think, you know, I haven't really talked to him in a while. I hope he's doing better, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the gist of it. It's just kind of like, you know, like misery loves company and I, I don't love misery anymore. All right. And, uh, on that note, let's move on to the next song, uh, I'm So Dope. Uh, that was, I mean, it was kind of like an intermission -y song, I'd say, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, I, I really like that song. And I really want to throw it back into the set list. But, like, um, it's it's just one of those things where, like, I just have to, like, prioritize. It's like, I'll, you know, uh, once once another song starts doing better, it's like, ah, like I should throw that in the playlist because yeah. that's what people want to hear, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I don't, I mean, like I select a certain amount of songs uh, for set lists that I want to hear, but like mostly I'm going off of like, what do I think? Like if I, if I paid for a ticket and, to see somebody, like which songs would I want to hear from them? Right. And uh, um, to just to get back on track because I know I'm a bit of a yapper, but um, uh, I'm so, I'm so dope is literally just me trying to like, you know, be positive about myself and like say like, hey, like I'm over feeling shitty about myself all the time. Like mm -hmm. I, I and like when I say like I think something inside of me just kind of broke, you know? Yeah. It's like oh, I just got. First line. Yeah, like, it's like, I, I legitimately feel like I was just, I just had so much self-doubt and so much of this shit that, like, something in me just broke and it went, like, none of that really matters, does it? You know, like, like, how I view myself is, like, generally has nothing to do with, like, my place in the world or the universe even. Like, I may as well just, like, unapologetically love myself because, I mean, like... It doesn't matter either way. And I'd rather yeah. feel the good thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I mean, you know, it's not exactly a, a thing that happens overnight. You know, I still have my bad days, but like making the decision not to change your thing about that. Um, I like to tell people like here, it's not going to work right away, but you will wake up one day a couple years from now and realize, hey, I don't think as much bad stuff about myself anymore. And um, changing that from uh, going from I'm so dope to prescribe whatever is a it's a pretty jarring tone shift in terms of in terms of lyrical context. Um, if you'd want yes. to go into, if you want to go into prescribe whatever, I'd be I'd be down. Um. Uh, so unless, unless you don't want to, of course. So we'll no, no, no. I'm happy to I'm happy to talk about it. You know, like I. I I think that honesty is the best thing that we've got. So I will I will absolutely wear it on my sleeve. You know, um, I uh, so I I don't know that I talk about this very often, but like I've been sober, like completely sober, for about uh, four and a half years at this point. Oh, uh, it'll be five. It'll be thank you, thank you. It'll be five in November. Um, and like just the thing is, is like you know. 
like I, I have this long history of like addiction in both sides of my family. And like, I fell into that, you know, like the, mm-hmm. like desperation and, and depression and like negativity just fed into like addiction and addiction fed into that. And like, it became a place where like one day it just, I, you know, you, you just have to make the decision for yourself. It doesn't serve you anymore, but um, prescribe whatever is kind of like an ode to that feeling um because you know while while i have made a lot of work you know i've 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 done a lot of work to like make sure that my life is in a better place and i'm you know i'm real proud of myself for that you should be you know i mean like like i did have that experience and i wanted to like be honest about how that felt and like where I, where my head was at you know like mm-hmm. like any anything to like kill the desperation and like I don't wish for that on anybody. And like, I feel like talking about that in that light is important because like, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll be the first person to tell you anything in moderation. Like if you can, if you can manage your life and have substances, like feel free. Um, a lot of people cannot and I can't, you know? (laughs) All right. Um, yeah, that's the gist of that. All right, so going from that is immediately into Not Everyone Is Gonna Love You, which is one of only two songs on the record that doesn't have, uh, is not marked explicit on Spotify. Um, I think that's funny. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, not, uh, not Everyone's Gonna Love You, an armchair philosopher. So uh, let's, get into, let's get into Not Everyone's Gonna Love I don't, You. I don't swear at all on armchair. That's actually weird because no, I, I talk the you, most shit on that one. You do? Wait. In the chorus, you do. I guess it doesn't mark that. Um, weird. In the course of armchair? Yeah, in the course of armchair. Uh, I, let me clarify. We've played that song once and haven't played it since. So. Oh, oh man, I'd love yeah. to see that back on the set list. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. Me too. Um. Anyway, so not everyone's gonna love you. Um. Kind of the similar thing with, like, I'm so dope, except it's more of, like, an external thing, you know? Like, it's kind of the idea that it, it's it's basically, like, my anti-people-pleasing song, you know? It's, like, it, it, obviously, like, you shouldn't go out of your way to be a jackass, but, like, uh, sorry, can I, I no, totally, no, you know, all right, I'll, cool, I'll just, I'll let it fly. Um, <laughs> you know, like, obviously, you shouldn't go out of your way to be a jerk, but, like, um, you know, you're going to, I feel like in any people pleasers, like lifetime, Mm -hmm. you're going to get to a point where you realize that like, you can't really make everyone happy. And like, it is coming at the expense of you, you know, and uh, you're not going to be able to make everybody love you. And that's, and especially, especially if you're like someone like me, who is constantly putting myself out there on the internet, like, you have to realize that and you have to realize that that's okay. That's fine. You know, there are too many, too many people exist with too many people. I mean, with too many, sorry, let me start over. Too many people exist with too many different, uh, viewpoints and too many different factors to their personalities that like, you're not going to win them all. And, um, that's, that's just gotta be okay with you. You know, like, as long as you continue to try to do the right thing and you continue to try to love yourself, I think that's that's the most important thing to me. All right, and let's get on to the Pollyanna feature on that song. How was how was all that? So totally by accident, um, because like uh, what was it? Um, Pollyanna and I are signed to the same the same yeah, record label, as Records. Yeah, um, and. Uh, Rob is just Rob from I surrender is just like that guy's the man. He is the fucking man. He literally lives and breathes and bleeds for music and for like breaking out new artists. Like I, I cannot speak highly enough of this guy. Um, and, uh, his, and one of his big things is like making, making connections, you know, like he thinks it's important for, for everybody to like make connections because like, you know, all ships with the rising tide. Right. That, Which I agree with. Did that and so, oh, sorry. no, you're okay. Um, so like he had asked me if I had thought about like having a song with a feature on the record 
And um, when I came back to when, you know, like when I was like looking at my songs on the record, I was like, ah, I can't really see this. And then it just kind of clicked. I was like, this one, let's reach out to Jill. Like, let's like, mm-hmm. let's get Jill on the track. And then when Jill sent me back like the the tracks for it, I was like, yeah, like this is this this song is better with Jill on it. You know what I mean? Um. All right. Now let's go into when the well dries up. Um. I. Yeah. Let's just let's talk about that. Yeah. Was it, um. Was it one of those? Was it one of those songs you like threw together in twenty minutes off of a riff? Um. Sort of. I, uh, so, I mean, I, I had that song as like a demo for like an older band of mine. Um, and like, I just wanted, I, I just like the song. So I decided to use it for this record. Um, that one's actually, I mean, like, you know, like I, I, obvi- I was just talking about the whole addiction thing. Um, that one is definitely like a, it's, I, I like to call it a love letter to myself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if I were like standing outside of myself and like watching myself go through it, like this is kind of what I would say. Okay. Uh, Swindle. How about that? Swindle. Um, that one is very much about somebody that I used to work with who, um, you know, disguised like brotherly love as a, it's also kind of a love letter to like, you know, like big companies that say like, Hey, we're a family here. First off, if you ever working for a company that says we're a family, fucking run, (laughs) (laughs) run away as hard. Yeah. As hard and as, as, as fast and as just, just as fast as possible. Get out of there. Mm -hmm. Um, that is you, you are, that is the top level of, of company rhetoric used to justify emotional abuse. Um, but um yeah i mean like it's just like you, you know know your worth king <laughs> um one of my just know your worth this it does contain like one of my favorite lines on the song uh or in the album uh, i'm not being funny where's my um effing money i was just wondering like <laughs> um i don't i don't know i think that line's just funny oh yeah um well i mean the particular person that I wrote it about um, pocketed a lot of money from uh, the, the this band we were in. Oh, um, oh and, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah. My bad. Like, no, no. What I mean, I if I didn't want to talk about it, I wouldn't have written about it. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta be you gotta be prepared to talk about it if you put in a song. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, like, there's just like, like when you're, when you're like in music specifically, mm-hmm. or I mean, any, any industry where you're, you are expected to put a lot of heart and soul into it. Like a lot of people are going to take advantage of you because like, it's like, what are you willing to do to make this work? Mm-hmm. That's why big right. Exists. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's happened to me a couple of times <laughs> <laughs> right. and, uh, Yep. I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bored with myself. Um. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that one. That one is definitely like uh, me talking about like, like. Uh, so, I I like to tell people that like when I get like, when I get anxiety attacks or panic attacks or when I get into like, depressive episodes. Mm-hmm. They don't, they don't phase me in the same way anymore because like, I'm just fucking annoyed with them. You know what I mean? It's just like, like, God damn it with this shit again. Like I have so much things I have to do, you know, I can't afford to like, not want to like shower or like get off my, get out of bed. You know, I can't afford to like, not be able to use my hands because they're shaking and clenching so much. Like I can't afford to like not be able to think straight. So like, it's just really like, like being like bored with yourself is, it is like my way of saying like, I'm so bored of all of these like mental things that I can't 
really rein in all the time because like they're no longer they're no they're no longer viewed as these big like world ending things to me you know like they're just kind of just kind of annoying is it so like is it like your body reacts as it would an anxiety but yourself is just kind of like i'm this is really annoying yeah it yeah it, it's it's like the logical part of me it's like the logical part of me is is succumbing to depression because it's it's annoyed with the rest of me you know what i mean it's like like man i mean like i had an anxiety attack like earlier this week and like my hands were shaking and i was like man i have to like step away from work and then i was just pissed about that because i was like dude like i'm like like i just got off of tour like i don't have a lot of money right now like this is annoying you know like and it's i was it's like oh yeah i wrote a song about that that's funny yeah. And speaking of being low on money, let's go into my by far my my favorite from the record. <laughs> oh, what a segue! <laughs> Bye. Um, I stole that one from your show. Um, but uh, anyways, let's go into that. Nah, one. you didn't. You didn't steal nothing. That's the people's song. We are we are not bogarting by from anybody. <laughs> um. That song, I mean, like for for one, it's it's I, God, I love punk music, and as as often as I possibly can, I'm going to try to put punk music into my my records, you know. Well, that's, um, that's a punk album. You know, th I appreciate that you feel that way because like not everyone would agree, and I'm fine with that. Like a lot of people would call a lot a lot of like uh, you you'll find that like you're just never quite punk enough for the punks no matter what you do well, you know so. yeah like like I, I i was joking with a friend recently i was like i don't think you're truly a punk until someone else has called you a poser <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> someone's someone some other asshole has to be dismissive about something that you're about in order for you to be considered a, a punk and the minute the minute someone calls you a poser it's like all right you're, you know, welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't actually believe that, but like, it was, it's just a fun, a uh, fun little joke. Um, Back on to but uh, anyway, bye. Um, I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. Everything is expensive and there's not a whole lot of money going around. And uh, you just, you, you just wonder, like, I mean, I get that. I get that there's a certain amount of, um, like I'm, I understand that you have to be in touch to understand what's going on, mm -hmm. but you know, when, when a company becomes so massive that they're so out of touch with like who they're marketing to, it's like, how fucking dare you, dude? Like, how dare you sit in a nice comfy office and go home to a giant house? And like, you tell me what I'm supposed to be able to afford, Yeah, you know? I, I feel that. Well, I don't feel that because I haven't bought anything, but like, um, <laughs> you, you will, I, will. I, I think, I think everybody will at a certain point. And I'm not, you know? I'm not excited for that. And I, I hope that it gets better soon or we all just get really cool about like supporting local business rather yeah. than like big business. Well, no, what, Walmart, what, what they do is like Walmart will go into these small towns and mark themselves lower than the mom and pop shops. So we get more comfortable with them. Then they run them out of business and then mark up their prices. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like, like, um, I don't, I don't know if that's a possibility anymore, unfortunately. Um, you know what? I think, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised with, um, I mean, cause the thing is, is like, obviously like mom and pop shops can't compete with those prices, but like, if you, if you ignore the enticing bit of like the convenience mm -hmm. every so often, you know, and you, and you just go with like the person who's like just trying to make a living, like you kind of find that like more, mo I personally think that more money enters your community rather than like, enters like this big conglomerate overarching thing that like you have no control over. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, like, you know, all of the restaurants we go to here in Tucson are our community, like most of, you know, most of the shops, my, my wife just went antiquing with some friends recently. 
uh, you know, all of every time we do coffee, like we we go local and it's better, you know, like it's. It, oh, of course, yeah. Where where isn't there a Starbucks? You know. Um. Yeah, I forget where I was going with that, but I'm, right. maybe I made my point. <laughs> basically just one big f you to capitalism is by oh yeah 100 percent. now uh on to armchair philosopher um is this like a big i i always interpreted it as like a song like directed towards the social justice warrior uh yes and no um there's like, of course there's... like when it's needed of course like when it's like of course you know you should be advocating for different stuff that should be you know what i mean it's just like yeah you know. the thing is is the, the thing is is like everybody on the internet thinks that they have the right answer to a question that has many answers you know what i mean so like the minute we and the, the thing is is like there are so many people who are who are genuinely just well-meaning people who who are looking for um who are looking for, for answers and looking for the right thing to do, you know? However, I would argue that there is a shocking amount of people who are ready to sit in a chair and tell you everything that you're doing wrong and then pat themselves on the back as if they did something good for the world that day. Mm -hmm. And um, what the fuck does that do? You know what I mean? Like... I, I I have this very big, uh, uh, let's call it a pet peeve. I do not respect anyone telling me what I should be doing when they aren't, when they will not do it themselves. You know, mm -hmm. like, I do not like, uh, I do not like um, backseat drivers. I do not like people who call themselves idea guys. Uh, I do not like people. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, everyone can, anyone can fucking have an idea, you know? Mm -hmm. But like, you know, when it comes to like real issues and real things, you know, it's like, what, what, what is the positive thing that you're doing for the world when you're sitting online and, and just arguing with people about what to do? And the truth is, is like, I will sit there and I will argue with these people back on the internet. And it's not even because I feel like it's worth it. It's because I know that the engagement's going to boost my video. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> is that actually happened? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Hundreds of times. If you, if you ever see, okay. The next time you see one of my videos and you see it has more than a hundred thousand plays, look into the comments and, and just see he, he, Here's what I want you to look for first. First, I want you to see how many comments have multiple responses to those comments. And then I want you to look at how many of those comments with multiple responses have people arguing with each other. <laughs> like, it's like, if you're going to do it anyway, like, it's going to, I'm going to make it work for me, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't care. Fight me. <laughs> And going on to Avoiding the Issue, which is a pretty popular song on the record. Um, yeah, man, I wish I played, I wish that we played that one live, but I just, for one, I didn't have enough time to, I, I was touring with a new guy and I didn't have enough time to teach it to him. And, and um, also uh, that song shreds my voice um, towards the end. Definitely. And I just want to, yeah, and like I was going out for a month, so I just wanted to make sure that I was just kosher for like the entire month. But uh, we'll, uh, I've, I think I've worked it out. I think that that one, I, I would like to throw that one back into the mix. That one's one of my favorites. Um, but uh, it, that one is definitely just about like, you know, peop it's, it, it's about somebody who I love very dearly, who is kind of like stuck in their bubble and will not get out. And I've tried many, many times to like try to reach them on their ground and I just never have. And I don't know how to reach them and I can't. And um, I, there's, there's, there's a couple people in my life that I feel that way about. And unfortunately, sometimes you just, 
you can't reach them and you know all of the good intentions in the world aren't going to undo all of the the issues that somebody may have with themselves or with the world or all the all the um things that are getting in their way um all of the love in the world can't fix that unless that person's ready to get out and some people don't get out you know it's still worth trying every single time because some people will you you will reach some people but unfortunately you don't win them all and um that song is yeah that song is kind of like my grieving all right and then moving on to the final song on the record everything at once which has a feature uh from yeah tune network who did trumpets on that i'm pretty sure yeah yeah um so uh i mean jer first off jer fucking awesome we are the union fucking awesome um if uh, if any of your if your any of your listeners aren't familiar, uh, Scott Tune Network tours solo as Jer, um, and has a really sick uh, ska record that y'all should check out. And then Jer also plays for We Are the Union, which is a sick. Um, sorry, I got burps. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um. So uh, Jer also plays for We Are The Union, which is a sick ska band. And um, uh, I think everybody should check them out. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, that's that's another one of those songs that I kind of wish that I played more. But, um, you know, you know how it goes. Sorry, did you want me to tell you what, what it was about? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah if, you, if you could, I apologize. Yeah, no, no, don't apologize. Um, that that one is definitely just about like how it, it's like it. It feels like everything you know. You're. I, it feels like I'm feeling everything at once all of the time because it's just you know, in modern day, it's just such like a whiplash of like turn and look at this thing turn and look at that thing deal with your own feelings about yourself deal with your feelings about the people around you you know and it's like it's this it's this balancing act that makes you feel insane um and on top of that if you actually have like you know mental health issues and stuff it makes you feel even more insane um if you are a person on the spectrum who doesn't understand a lot of things about the world and at all times you feel even more insane. And um, yeah, that's that song is just literally about like um, being, feeling like you're, you're just losing it. <laughs> and that is, oh, sorry, what? No, no, that's, that's it. That's the whole tweet. <laughs> and that's, that's the record prescribe whatever. Um, yeah, that's, that was the first question, by the way. Um, we're going on. We're on a roll here. <laughs> Sweet. Um. All right. <laughs> and this one's a pretty big one as well. What was the process of getting yourself onto the music scene with your first ever record? I get it. Um. So that that was my first record as Matstagram. So I feel like there's not much to be said about like getting into music with that because I had been playing. And, Tons of other bands before that. Like I'd toured the country multiple times. Like I, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've done a lot of shit, <laughs> um, but uh, with, with, I get it. I honestly, I had kind of resigned myself to the fact that like, maybe my touring days are over and I'm just kind of fine with put as long as music is just something that I do in some capacity. I am grateful for the opportunity and you know, I mean like a lot of, a lot of people like they'll, their bands will break up because they're like, Oh, we can't tour anymore. And for me, it was like, well, you don't have to like break your band up because you can't tour. Like just, just do, do the thing that you love within the capacity that you can do it, you know? And I get that there are other factors like, you know, starting a family and you know, like your career and whatnot. So that's not the case for everybody, but I think that, living a well-rounded life means that you do everything that you that you want to do and want to accomplish and you know like 
I personally was like, you know what? Like I had a good run. Um, I can say that I tried my best and I'm proud of myself. So I'm just going to do this for myself. And uh, that's a big part of the reason why Mattstagram is the name is because that was literally just my internet name. It was like my Instagram handle before it was anything else. Then I changed it to Mattstagram on everything because I was like, eh, it'd be easier to find me if it was all the same thing. I didn't want to think of a band name because I was like, well, this isn't a serious band. Um, you, just, you just put your first name and your last name and it's uh, in, it, in the middle. Yeah, literally that. And it's just, it kind of just happens to sound like Instagram, which sounds funny to me. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so, yeah, Mattstagram wasn't supposed to become at all the thing that it's become. And it did, you know? And we're just, we're just going to ride this wave and see how far it takes us, you know? Do you want to uh, explain a little bit of, like, the contents in I Get It? Uh... Yeah, I guess I could. Um, uh, I don't, are I don't, you talking? I'm not gonna go track by track again since it's since it's kind of. I, I don't want to say it's like it, it's less popular. It's just like I don't. Oh, it's less popular. Okay. For fucking sure, it's less popular. <laughs> That's totally I, okay, okay with me. Okay, I'm gonna be totally real with you. I literally didn't even know it existed until we were driving back from the show. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So, um, I mean, I guess if you want to go into some of the contents of it, I'd be open to that. But if you didn't, yeah, I'd love to. If you'd be okay with that, I'm probably not gonna go track by track. You can, you can do whatever you have the floor. Yeah, no worries. Um, do you have any like particular questions, no. or do you want me to just talk about it? You like, can just talk about it. Um, so I get it. Um, was just if if I could say what i think it was now it was literally just me feeling things in like the span of a week um, <laughs> i i recorded a bunch of demos for like a record because i was like i want to put a record out that i that that is literally just me writing songs that i like you know which yeah. which has never not been the case but i mean now with a growing audience like it's a little bit more thought out you know um i get it was literally just like the first like eight and a half songs that I could think of, you know? Um, so it was just me just throw, just yapping. It was me yapping. It's what I'm doing right now, except songs. <laughs> uh, I think Does She Wanna is one of the funniest songs of the decade. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, it is one of the funniest songs of the decade. I, it is funnier than like the Lonely Island I've oh my gosh maybe I should do another video for that song because a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people like that song but like basically like that was another one of those ones where like it did well online and I released the song but like for some reason it just didn't like catch on as much as the others and I was like that's eh, fine but every time I talk to somebody who like genuinely listens to like my music as a whole and likes likes you know, like, who's, like, a fan, they always bring that song up. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, all right, well, I guess we can move on to the next question. Um, what was the highlight of your recent tour? Oh, man. Um, this is gonna be such a, um, like, basic answer, because, like, of course it would be these three cities, but we had some of the best shows that we've had as Matstagram in LA, Chicago, and New York city. <laughs> um, I kept refer. So I kept referring to this, this tour as the one where we found out we had fans because um, like, like it's actually, it's funny because like uh, the show that you came to is actually one of the thinnest shows. Oh yeah. I was, it was shocked by that. I was, it was one of the most, there were seven people there. I counted. There was like seven people in the audience. Yeah, you know, and, and like that that's the thing is like with touring on this level, it's still kind of a crapshoot because like you never know what you're going to get. Like I have tons of followers online, but like the whole thing is like you have to you have to think about the number of that of those people. First, you have to think of the entire world. How how many people are in the entire world, right? Mm -hmm. Uh where those people might be in relation to the world, right? Yeah. Um then you have to think of how far 
uh, is the drive from their house to the show, whether they feel like going or not, you know, like there are so many factors that go into it, you know, and um, it's it's like uh, you, you can't just rely on having like a, a big social media presence, although it does help a lot, um, I will say. Um, but I mean, like, yeah, yeah, that show was probably one of the like least attended ones. It was like that one. And then like our show in Mich Michigan wasn't super well attended. Our show in, in Pittsburgh wasn't. Um, there's like maybe like one or two others. Um, but um, basically like, yeah, like people kept showing up to shows all to or who like knew raccoon tour who knew us who knew um hummus vacuum who we went on tour with after like we did our second our second leg with um you know who and, yeah like like this was by you know it was it was kind of unexpected Cause you um did... oh sorry no 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 go for it you did tour with uh raccoon tour like a year ago when you released Future Didn't Amount to Much um, in a couple of places in the East Coast. Uh, was that... Uh, West Coast, actually. Or West Coast. Why did I see East Coast? Um, but was that was that similar, or...? Um, to a lesser degree, I want to say. Um, I think that um, the the crossover of like rat uh uh matstagram and raccoon tour i almost said ratstagram jesus <laughs> um the the uh the crossover of like raccoon tour fans and matstagram fans didn't really happen until we announced that we were doing a song together and until we like you know announced like we were doing some shows together and stuff um and like i honestly like i really i really love that personally because like i i love that we can like influence each other's careers in like a positive way. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I am a huge fan of the whole, like all ships at the rising tide. And I think raccoon tour is a phenomenal band. I think that Nate and the rest of raccoon tour are phenomenal people, yeah. you know, uh, you, like you produced for a uh, cactus song. I know. Uh, are you going to be producing for the rest of the, uh, um, album or? I, so we haven't talked about it or anything. Um, but like, you know, I mean, like whenever we like chat and stuff, like there's always like the whole, like, wow, like that would be cool. Huh. You know? And like, I am, I'm not, I'm not a very pushy person. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to influence people's decisions just because I want something because like, I would love to keep working with raccoon tour, but like, also I understand that, um, part of the experience is like he you know like you sh you probably should be working with as much people as yeah. possible in order to like be as well-rounded as possible so if uh you know on i really am just grateful that i got to work on cactus song i'm grateful that i got to like help them demo out a couple of other songs which i'm not at liberty to say anything more about that <laughs> but um yeah i mean like it's it's like would I would I do it? Hell yeah. Um, would I be upset if they went with somebody of uh, somebody else? Of course not. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm just grateful that we got to you know. All right, and uh, so let's go to this next question. So, how do you take care of your voice through long recording sessions or shows? So, um, long recording sessions, it usually is no problem. For some reason, I think shows is kind of where it gets rough for me. Um, and I'm so glad you asked this because I've literally tried like everything I possibly can because like I get allergies, right? Mm -hmm. I get pretty bad allergies. So like, um, you know, just depending on like the time of year, like I'll, I'll either truck through a bunch of shows or I'll lose my voice um, on like day three, you know, Um <laughs> And uh, it sucks because it's like it's not fair when like people come to like, you know, when they like pay to come to the show and then like I show up and I suck, you know. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I I've been like regularly taking allergy medicine on the road. Um, I what I recently started doing, which has been a godsend, is I started using a neti pot. Uh, do you know what that is? Oh, my God. 
I watched the Unisana's video on that. Oh my god, yeah. So it's Unisana's basically video? like I, I don't know who that is, but um yeah, for, for anybody who's listening who doesn't know what a neti pot is, it's basically waterboarding yourself so that you can breathe later. <laughs> um Mothers it's like to cleanse their children of sin. <laughs> yeah, for, I mean, basically, yeah, I, I feel pretty, pretty fresh and anew after a neti pot. But um, I mean, like that has worked wonders. I mean, like, obviously, you know, the, the, like, the obvious answer is like, make sure that you're drinking hot tea or le- with like honey and lemon. Uh, don't, you know, try and try to avoid smoking as much as possible uh don't uh don't drink milk or orange juice you know all right and let's go over to your tiktoks you're very i wouldn't say you're well i guess, yeah you're you're pretty famous for your tiktoks um so yeah you, how would you how do you come up with ideas for them i don't know <laughs> i don't know i literally just I, I have, I have like, I have a bunch of ideas written down somewhere for, for like things that I could do on TikTok that just genuinely make me laugh. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I do them. Sometimes I just have an idea and I do it immediately. Right. Like mm-hmm. I just like, if, if I have the idea and I don't want to lose it and I know I need to post something, I just do it right then and there. Um, you actually reminded me that I have to like do a video after this. So thank you for that. Um, I, I, I question, are you a fan of Sonic? Um, uh, I wouldn't say I'm a big fan or I'm into the, like into all the games. Like if you told me to name like a game off the top of my head, I could not, but I know the character and I, I'm okay. well, fan. then you might feel, you, you might not feel one way or another about what I'm going to post today, but, um, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I know, I know, uh, you called it the Sonic Adventure, and I thought that was, I thought it was really funny. Oh, yeah, well, uh, yeah. Adventure is the, you know, the series. My, uh, my, my biggest, my biggest desire in the world is to get a lawsuit. <laughs> Why um, would you want that? I'm, I'm totally kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, that's, you know, that's why, like, everything is just, like, slightly different enough to where it's like okay like you know this is this is very obviously parody law yeah um but uh yeah that one was just kind of like i you know got the autism blew up and i was like okay like i'm just gonna like lean into this and tell people exactly what i'm about you know (laughs) like yeah that's why you went on a sonic that's why you went and performed in a sonic jumpsuit one day Oh yeah, LA went off. That was okay. So here's the thing: I'm never doing that again. Um, <laughs> it's just too hot. It's oh my god! I so like my performance at the show definitely suffered, but like I don't think anybody like noticed or cared because it was like they're probably just like, "Yo, this guy's doing a whole show in a fucking Sonic onesie. That's dope." <laughs> you know? You, you know what? Maybe. Yeah, I don't want to say never again. Maybe I'll do it in like the winter time, you know? Yeah. Um, was, uh, I imagine Sonic EXE is your favorite 3D pasta, right? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, wow, really? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, it's like, I love, I love, you know, I grew up with the character and I love the franchise and stuff, but like, or I don't know if it's franchise. I, like, it's a, it's a franchise. I, I I love creepy pasta as a separate thing. Yeah. But like I actually love going on like Reddit and like reading creepy pasta. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like the ones the ones that are like, oh, this one's about a video game, like they don't really do much for me because I'm like I'm like, that doesn't seem like it could be real. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean it, it like it kinda seems Especially like it could be real, but not yeah exactly exactly thank you um i was really into slender man for a while but like the cool, oh slender man like was the, a good one like the cool slender man like marble hornet slender man not you know deviant art i uh oh man i i always re- i wanted to really play like the slender man game that looked like it had like nintendo 64 graphics do you know which one i'm talking about eight pages 
Seven. Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um. All right. So, your little mascot guy, little, little skull guy, Dingus. I love Dingus. Him. I love him. I, I, he, he's cool. Uh, do you give give us some lore about him? Okay, I'll give you the exact lore as of right now. Um, including like how he was conceived, which uh, you are about to learn. You and you and everybody listening are about to learn exactly how much stuff I do that's totally on accident. Um, so uh, when I first did Matstagram, I I was like. Uh, I was based, I went to an artist to like get a logo done. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really, I really want to credit the artist. So, um, is there any way I don't, I don't know his name off the top of my head. Uh, it's like Jake punks on Instagram, I think, but like, can I send you his link later so that you can credit him wherever? Yeah. So I, I appreciate that. Um, so I, I had him do, and so basically, like, I paid him to do it, and, like, he came back with a ton of options, like, literally, like, a, a full sheet of options. Um, And I noticed there's this little skull guy, and, like, for whatever reason, I was just like, yo, can you give that skull guy my hair? And he was like, yeah. And so that's how, like, that form of dingus, you know, um, I, I'm going to call it uh, dingus one. Um <laughs> So, like, that's how, like, Dingus was made, right? And I was just like, I really like this little guy. I want him to be synonymous with Matstagram. And um, one day, Rob with, uh, um, you know, I Surrender Records, Rob was like, hey, like, does your little mascot guy have a name? And I was like, I don't know. We can just, like, call him Donkus or something. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, cool. And, like... Uh, that just kind of got lost in translation. And and so Rob just started calling him Dingus. And I was like, yeah, first name Dingus, last name Donkus. You know, why not? Um, And uh, Don Donkus was, uh, what for me, was a reference to a an Adventure Time episode where they, like, come up, like, on, like, the, the like, the graveyard. And, like, one of them just says, like, rip some Donkus. <laughs> and I always... I always thought that was super hilarious that it just said that on some guy's like grave. Um, but uh, yeah, so like basically Dingus was just made out of that. And like when I did the music video for still hearing about it, I was like, okay, like I want to like, if I'm going to incorporate this character as like something um, that's like synonymous with Matstagram, then like I should like have him as like, imagery right mm -hmm. so i decided to just kind of like make him the object of like my misplaced aggression for that video and uh ever since he's just kind of been like a thing you know he's just, i got a mascot that actually I, remind me that i have to send something to you later because like i've been kind of toying with the idea of making a uh, dingus into a video game character like a platformer <laughs> and like <laughs> I have a ton of sprites for like a main character, like a dingus, like controllable dingus, like player character. I would love and that. I haven't used them yet, but I just like sharing them with people because I think it's cool. I love that. <laughs> uh, does dingus have like a special story behind him, or do you want to like make it up like right now, like a like like a backstory to the specific character? Um, as of right now, dingus. So as of right now for prescribe whatever i want to say that dingus is literally just an analog for like whatever you project onto him right mm -hmm. um i had this whole I, d I don't know if i'm gonna use this concept in the future or not but like speaking of like the little like making him into a little video game um i had this whole concept of uh doing like an, an entire game based on dingus where basically like dingus dingus is like uh, I, don't, I don't know how to get into this without giving too much away i'll, I'll just say that like dingus dingus's lore as of right now is very um very vague and we're gonna purposefully keep it that way until i know exactly what i want to yeah. say using dingus that poor flannel by the way Oh my god! I 
So, oh man, I have to, I have to say something that's going to upset you. Um, the, the, the original dingus, uh, cardboard mesh got like bent and fucked up on oh, tour. No. So oh, no. I know, I know. So I, I took the, I took the face off. So we're going to, we're keeping the face. Um, but we had to say goodbye to like the base and all that, which I mean, part of me was like sick. I get my flannel back, but, um, yeah, it, it's a sad day. It, or it was I hope sad. It was not in Lincoln. Uh, no, it wasn't in Lincoln. It was like at the, it was like, I don't know exactly when it happened, but like towards the end of tour, like I noticed like his neck was bent back. Like the, uh, one of his like arms was missing. Cause like we made him out of, I like, I made him out of like cardboard and like a hanger and like the hanger was used to like bend his arms wherever you needed him to go. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Rip, rip the first iteration of dingus. A new dingus will emerge from the, from the ashes soon. <clears throat> All righty. Uh, dang. All right. That was a downer. Um, I'm so sorry. Poor Dingus. Poor Dingus. That's what he get for for not paying the bills. Um, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's on him anyway. He's an asshole. Uh, so, what bands influenced you uh, the most as an up-and-coming writer? Uh, like, when I was growing up? Um, uh, I guess. My, I guess. My, my two... So, my two favorite bands were uh, Taking Back Sunday and Motion City Soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and I'm, I was poor thing. I'm so sorry you could not go to when we were young. Oh no, that's okay. <laughs> I um, I honestly like hot take. I think I've seen Taking Back Sunday enough times in my life. Uh, I don't know what's going on with them now, as far as their live performances go. But are they, uh, pulling, are they pulling a bright eyes? No. Uh. I just basically like I, okay. I'm not trying to like talk trash here, but no, um, no, that's fine. A lot of people have been bummed out with their performances lately, and like I've always known them to be like kind of a hit or miss band. Like they just have some good days and they have some bad days, but like the bad days seem really bad now. And it's like you know what? Like if that's part of the experience, I'm okay with saying that I don't want any you know i don't i don't care for that particular experience that's fine but it's not a show i want to pay for mm -hmm. is that fair to say yeah no that's that's fair to say uh but going on your influences as a writer uh yeah sorry um i mean like it's it's gonna be a lot of like totally like yeah like that totally makes sense uh just like generic responses, you know, I, I, oh yeah, yeah. MCR is a big one. Um, I really love that their ability to like create worlds through music, you know, and, um, you know, like, they, yeah, yeah. So funny thing about the, uh, the black parade, uh, was, um, before they had ever like released that record, like the first time, that I ever heard Black Parade and like many other people ever heard Black Parade was like, it was like an MTV performance, I think. And they did it on a rooftop in New York City. <laughs> and like, this was like the first time that like the world saw Gerard come out with like his like blonde hair and like the marching jacket. And we were like, what are we looking at? Like, holy crap. Like this, it took everybody by by store, like left field, totally left field, you know? And it was super new and exciting and the song was big and like theatric and like it was just it was just such a big moment, I feel like for me and like a lot of people. And uh yeah. the funny thing was like I was we we got to play a rooftop show in New York City uh <laughs> on this tour and like I was like that was the highlight for me. I I know you asked the highlight earlier like and my my answer is still the same the three shows but like this the entire tour i was looking forward to playing on a rooftop in new york because i was like that's that's on my bucket list i want that you know um 
but anyway, uh, influences, uh, you know, I'd say like Nirvana was a big influence. Dave Grohl was a big influence. Blink-182 was a big influence. Um, Blink-182, Blink like, I mean, you know, like they, they spawned a hundred bands that, that were like, we're going to get on stage and just act like a bunch of assholes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, Which, it's, it's, a, it's a frat, it's a frat boy band. Almost, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. No, totally, they were a frat boy band. Um, that's totally fair to say. But like, um, I, I mean, like, they kind of inspired me to like whatever I was doing. Like, I, I had to make, I wanted to make sure I was having fun with it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, which is why, like. I don't mind being kind of a goof on stage, you know, I don't take myself too seriously. Um, but, um, man, there's, there's so many influences that I could cite. I honestly don't know. I mean, that cause like when it comes to like songwriting and when it comes to life, like one of my biggest things is, um, I like to be influenced by as many possible things as I can be because like, I think that some, the thing the things that make interesting life, like in, the things that make life interesting, the things that make art in interesting are the facts that it comes from the human experience and just the general experience of like the world. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I like to take, you know, like I, I like to tell people that like, even when I don't agree with somebody, I try to look for, a lesson in in my interaction with them you know what i mean mm -hmm. and like sometimes you might find like like you might find that like somebody who is you know even like super right wing like insane person you're like fuck yeah. they're crazy you know if you're looking for a lesson you might you might find that like oh like you know what this person feels not represented in a certain way and maybe they're, maybe they're, you know, maybe their actions are misguided, but that comes from a real place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I'm not, that's not to justify like bigotry or racism or any, you know, crazy shit. But like, it's just to say that like. Am I back? Okay. Thank God. My, I thought my mic, my mic died. Oh, like, what? I was, where, where'd you lose me? No, 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 no. I didn't lose you. Uh, my mic died. I, I, oh, okay. I, I was quiet when you said like right wing I was yeah like, I hope you didn't get, like, think I took that the wrong way no 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 for sure like it's like it, it like it's it's not an engine for for justification but mm -hmm. it is like it it sh I I feel that it's like a good prompt in like becoming more worldly and like understanding why things are certain ways and understanding how you want to navigate in the world is you should take influence from every single thing um now i have a, a very very hard line at like you know mm -hmm. ignorance but like you can still learn something from an ignorant person by sit by if you just think like why why is this person like that you know all right does, does that make sense yeah that, that makes that makes a lot of sense so um i guess going back to uh, the idea of your favorite bands. Um, has it been tough to incorporate struggles with the old punk style that we saw back in the old days with bands such as, you know, like you said, MCR or um, Nirvana or Blink-182? Uh, trying, trying to, you know, put those uh, ideas and sounds into the current struggles that we have today? Um, so I think that, like, my whole thing is... is I, I like to say that I'm influenced by, by artists, but I'm not trying to replicate them. Mm -hmm. So I personally don't find that it's hard for me to like take what I want to do in music and like apply it to all of the things that I want to write about, you know, cause like, it's not for me, it's not about like sounding like one thing, you know, it's, it's about saying like, what is, what is this thing that I'm feeling and how do I accurately represent it? Um, let's go over to, um, here. So, uh, how did you get started with music production? Um, I just, like, wanted to record myself, you know? Like, I had, like, ideas, and, like, I wanted to, like, record my own ideas, you know? 
So um, I started doing that. And then like for, you know, other bands and stuff, like I was like, yeah, like I can like record your stuff. Like, you know, um, it, it really just came from like a place of like, you know, if if you want to if you want to write a book, what's a good place to start with? Well, like you need something to write your ideas on. OK, like I can buy a, a pen and paper or it'd be a lot easier to like buy a computer because then I could spell check myself. You know what I mean? And like mm -hmm. it's, it's just it just kind of went from there. Um, what do you typically use to record or produce music? Because I'm right now learning how to use um, an MPC one. Um, you know, just for making beats and producing all that stuff. Uh, do you use like Ableton or a DAW specifically? Yeah, yeah. Um, I so I'm I'm very much a big fan of Logic. Um, I think that Logic has like probably the easiest user interface to just jump in and start immediately with, but like also has so much features um, that are super useful. Um, and I've just I've just found that like like I love logic because it was super easy to get in and immediately start with, you know? So like the entry, the, you know, the entry point isn't a huge learning curve, but on top of that, it's, there's like so many things you can do with it, yeah. you know? And that's, um, that's oh, no, you go. yeah, no, I just, I find that logic is like for, or at least in my experience, logic is both accessible to the beginner and the, um, the advanced um engineer mm -hmm. and i i think um i like when i was starting with music production like everything was so like at ifl studio or even ableton it was just so head bashingly confusing i just thought it wasn't even worth it yeah yeah i mean like i i used to mess with fl studio a lot too and um i like learned it eventually because i'm stubborn and i i'm like i'm going to fucking figure this out if i want it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so um with uh yeah no i i totally get where you're coming from because like with ableton like i just shut down i was like i will never fucking understand this confusing piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> like, like, um, i was i for like years i preferred sound trap Soundtrap. I don't even know. Oh, I don't even know what that one is. Soundtrap. It's just search up like Soundtrap, um, on Google. It's like it's made by Spotify. Um, it's it is the oh, well, simplest music production thing ever, but it's also absolutely terrible. I mean, if it works, it works, right? Yeah. But, like, also, it kind of sounds like you're saying it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, like, I just, I'm, I, and I've played with, like, a lot of DAWs, too. You know, like, I used, uh, I did use Ableton. I used S FL Studio. I, I, I even, you know, I mean, like, I screwed around in GarageBand uh, when I was a kid and in school. Um, I, uh, what was the one that, I, I, I used Cakewalk a lot. Um, which I don't think they even make Cakewalk anymore, but, um, that was like they do. one of, they do. Okay. Cakewalk is still around. Um, Cakewalk, I feel like is like, I, 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 I have like a love for it because I learned a lot on it, but like, I don't necessarily think I love it anymore. Was it, <laughs> you know? What happened? I don't know. I think it was, it's just like one of those things like, um, how do I say this? So, so you know how, like, if it's like two in the morning and you're hungry and you're like, fuck, everything's closed, but Denny's is still open <laughs> and you're like, oh, thank you, Denny's. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, but like at 11 AM when you have options and you're like, oh, I want to like eat something that won't make me feel like shit after like, you're not like, fuck yeah, let's go to Denny's. <laughs> Well, my Denny's is pretty good. Every time I've gone to Denny's, uh, to a, to the Denny's like an hour away from me, um, I oh, okay. had a good time. No, no, that's fair. But like, that's the thing is like Denny's is just like it's not the worst that you could have, and it's just kind of there for you. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is, I would say that uh, Cakewalk is my Denny's. 
Um, alrighty, <laughs> so let's go into the next question here. Uh, so this is actually a question from my mom. Uh, you saw her at the show. That was pretty cool. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Hi, mom. <laughs> uh, she um when I told her that we were gonna interview you, she was like, "Oh my god! Oh, I'm so happy!" Like she was super excited. <laughs> I th- she was way more excited than me, and I was like, "Uh, hi." She was like, "Telling everybody." <laughs> that's <so cool. laughs> oh, that's so cool. Um, but yeah. Oh, before you before you ask this, um, that just reminded me of. Do you want to hear something funny? Sure, go ahead. Is um at our at our Vegas show. Uh, mine and Raccoon Tours Vegas show mm-hmm. on the tour. Um, so uh, there was a a mom who came with their kid, and they were like, they they walked up to me after the show, and they're like, "So I came to the show with my kid because my kid really really loves Raccoon Tour." And I was like, "Okay, I don't really know who else is on this bill, but like that's fine." Um, she was like, "The moment I heard you play, I knew who you were because I follow you and I love your music." So, like, <laughs> kind of totally by accident, she, like, like totally by accident, her kid came for Raccoon Tour, and she came for me. Well, I, I, I came for both of you, so. But, uh, oh, I love that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, that's super cool. That's super cool. You can accidentally meet somebody. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, anyways, what was... Oh yeah, this is a question for my mom. Uh, do you like folk punk? Um, you know what? I I res- I like folk punk in the sense that I respect it. Um, I don't really listen to a lot of folk punk though. Yeah. Does that make sense? So, so like you don't really listen to like Ramshackle Glory or Pat the Bunny at all, really? Uh, not really. No, I think my wife. Uh, really, she. I think she used to like Pat the Bunny. Um, it's, it's like, uh, I, like, cultural relevance wise, I love the existence of folk punk because it's like, it's like exactly what punk is about, you know, it's just like, when it comes to like the sound, like it just never really did much for me. Alrighty. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Sorry, mom. No. (laughs) (laughs) Um, all right. So, um, what are some, what are your future goals as an artist? Um, oh, I got two, two answers to that, you know? Um, one of, one of those answers is, uh, take it as far as I possibly can while being honest to what I want out of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, uh, obviously like, you know, like, most artists like they want to be the biggest artist in the world right um yeah i and like i'm not like what i'm saying is like of course i wouldn't say no to that but i also want to do it on my terms and not be told what to do (laughs) you know and and you know i mean like aside from like be the biggest artist in the world it's it's more so like i want to see how far this goes on my terms you know, because I'm okay with not being a household name, you know, I've, I've spent most of my life not being one and I turned out just fine. Um, but um, I mean, I guess that kind of segues into my second answer is like, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to like, live my best life, you know, mm-hmm. it's really not like my goals are very vague. Um, and like, it's kind of like, I like that, like they're vague on purpose because I want to just enjoy my life how it is in whatever capacity that it is in. And, um, so, so I really just want to take it day, day by day. Like, truthfully, if one day I decide, oh, I don't really want to do this anymore, it's not really bringing me personal fulfillment, I'll, I'll probably just stop, you know? But that's not the case now. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go into a little bit more basic questions. Um and uh these are just like, you know, quick uh and then, you know, like a couple whatever and then we'll move on to, you know, the closing questions. Um sure. so um 
Is there a specific standout song in your discography that really, like, describes you as an artist that you're just like, dang, that that song, I'm so proud of that? Mm, like, one that, like, literally just uh, is me? I mean, I <laughs> um, we, could, we could go for both. Because uh, you mentioned that... Um, you mentioned that... Uh, let me see here. Let me go back to... Because you mentioned that When the Well Dries Up was kind of your anthem to yourself uh, before, right? I would, so, like, I would say that, like, most of my songs are just kind of, like, pieces of myself. And, like, none of them have ever mm -hmm. been, like, this is what I would show. But I will say that, like, I have, I have, like, two or three songs on my new record that I've explained to, um, I've explained to Rob, I've explained to my band, like, this is the song that I would show people if I had to introduce myself using a song, mm -hmm. you know? Um, one of them is actually the new one that you heard uh, that I played. Uh, um, but then I have... Oh, yeah, that one, that one. Yeah, Caffeine. Yeah, that one's, Ca that that one's like one of my... That one's Caffeine? Yeah, yeah it's called oh. Caffeine. Oh, uh, I, I just... I, I knew it as Never Works the second time. Never Works is good second time. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, like, that's like... Uh, uh, we're, we, it's, we just wanted to call it something short so it'd be like oh yeah that song's caffeine you know um, but uh, yeah like that one um, and then um, what was it um, Jesus why am I having a hard time thinking oh yeah I have this song that like I don't really know what we're gonna call it yet but like I kind of really want to call it the shitty jeep song <laughs> And, uh, because, like, it's literally just this song about how, like, I drive this shitty Jeep that's, like, it's, like, a t 20, or, or 2002, not even oh. 20, it's, like, a 2002 Jeep Cherokee that's, like, on its last legs and, like, always, like, miles? something. Oh, fuck. Uh, like, it's, it's at least 200 right now. 200,000 miles? Yeah, like, at least 200,000. Um... But uh, it's like kind of like the this whole song about how like this Jeep is like shitty and always breaking, but like it'll still get me from A to B, and like how like that's how I kind of feel about myself. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. That's that's a really good concept for a song. I yeah. like that. It's like, oh, do I love this Jeep because it reminds me of me? Like, <laughs> um, also like. You mentioned that armchair philosopher in a, another interview with uh, that you did with the Good Nights podcast. Um, you mentioned that armchair philosopher was your favorite lyrical song, or had your, had, uh, your favorite lyric in it, um, which I I love as well. I honestly like I couldn't tell you what lyric that was at this point because like uh, speak you know my oh sorry. Was was it the was it the well actually line? Yeah, actually, well actually. Yeah, the um the um speak so matter of factually equivalent to well actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just love talking shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that that line is like just like such a good like. Uh -huh. I I I just have a really special big spot in heart for a fuck you song. And that song is absolutely a fuck you song, <laughs> you know. Um, is, has that has uh, your favorite lyric on the album changed at all since that interview? Uh, I haven't really thought about it mostly because, like, um, uh, truthfully, I it, it, when you come up on like two years of playing the same songs over and over again, yeah. like you kind of. They become more of a, of like a, um, how do I say this? Like, they're like less of a, a thought and like, oh, whoops. Sorry, I just clicked on a video accidentally. Um, like, it's like less of like a thing that you're thinking about and like more of like a, like a reaction mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, they're just, they're just sort of a thing that I don't think about as much and they just kind of I mean, it's happen. It's become rinse and repeat, right? A little bit, you know? And, I mean, like, you know, like, your favorite band in the world, like, they, they play your favorite songs every time they come through town, but, like, 
you know, the same thing for 15 years will get, get, you know, will get old eventually. But, you know, I mean, I always, I, on that note, I like to tell people like, if I ever get to the point where somebody's asking me to play the same song for 15 years in a row, like, regardless of how I feel about the song, I will be grateful for the opportunity. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that being said, I just kind of don't really think about it as, as often as I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm already in like, next record mode yeah and speaking of uh what songs you play on like set how do you set up a set list um mostly it's like a combination of like it, like the first priority is like okay what songs are people going to want to hear right um the second priority is what songs uh are do people respond well to in our set list and then the third priority is what songs do i want to play you know mm -hmm. and i kind of like uh, um weigh all those factors into like what songs i'm going to play you know so uh let's go with your set list that you did uh for uh tour it was i think it was productive uh, productive still like hearing about it um caffeine oh yeah and then... yeah ca uh and then after caffeine it was by and then after by it was not everyone's gonna love you i think and then... yeah and then and then it was it was i'm soft um autism. uh got the autism and then uh we closed with um uh the future didn't amount to much and then on the second half of the tour we closed with uh, a song called Radio Silence off of I Get It. Hmm. All right. Um, awesome. Yeah. So, like, how do you, how do you, so, like, if you wanted to, like, go down that list, like, what would be examples of those? Uh, well, like, when I, when I think about, list? when I think about the songs that I after, absolutely have to play in the set list or else like people will be like what the hell did i pay to see matt stagram for uh it would be got it would be got to be productive got the autism and i'm soft right because those are like my three biggest songs like it would be stupid not to play them yeah um yeah. but uh after that it's like okay uh still hearing about it not everyone's gonna love you like those songs have music videos i should play those um, with caffeine, that one is like mostly like, like, I like playing a new song for people because it's kind of like you get to like test their reactions to it. Right. And, um, caffeine just like made it as a mainstay into the set list because like people literally like, like I'm, I, this is going to sound like bragging when I say this, but like. The first time we ever played that song, I saw people start singing it along back with me because they they were having such a good time. I saw and like, in my head. right? See, and it's like, well, shit, it must be a good song, you know? Like, I'm I'm not gonna say that like I'm like I'm I don't want to like toot my own horn or anything, but like, if the shoe fits, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> um. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, Future didn't amount to much. That one was like, okay, well, we have to play that one if yeah. any time we're playing with Raccoon Tour, right? Like, yeah, definitely. there's, it would be stupid to play a show with Raccoon Tour and not play that song. It was my most listened to song on Spotify. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> I love that. Um, what else? Um, so we switched it actually like halfway on in the tour. We switched that song just because we were like, we were like, eh, like, we don't really, you know, it like, we don't want to play like, it with it would, Yeah, it would feel, it would feel kind of weird. Right. Um, it wouldn't feel right. To be honest, the reason that we switched it out with Radio Silence was because, like, a lot of things kind of came last minute for this tour. Mm -hmm. All of the songs you heard us play were, like, the, again, I was saying there was a new, a new, um member that was playing with me uh, right who, who was it uh isaac oh. so um for a while uh we've been playing with uh 
um, another buddy of mine who plays guitar, right? Mm -hmm. And I was playing bass, um, which is why, like, the, sh the shirts with Dingus all have him playing bass on it, because I was playing bass. Um, but, um, yeah, so, like, basically, like, last minute, like, my, my, my friend Isaac Stockton, um, tremendous dude, tremendously wonderful dude. I love him to, to bits. He's one of my longest friends. Um, he was like, yeah, like I can like fill in for this tour. Like, so we, we got him on and I just taught him as many songs as I had the time to. Um, I was also in the middle of like moving, uh, which was not really yeah. something. It, it was not, it, it was, it was a shock that we had to move. Right. Like, it was, it, yeah, it was not a, a great time. <laughs> like, um, I'm sorry. but no, it's okay. It's, it's just, you know, sometimes, sometimes there's just like no good, uh, there's just no good timing on things sometimes. And unfortunately you just gotta, you just have to fucking deal with it, you know? So I, I just dealt with it. I, we moved, I taught a uh, new player like new stuff um i saved up the money to like pay my band members i actually ended up ha ended up having to like sell a guitar to go on this tour oh, um oh, no. yeah well i mean i didn't have to like in order for us to get on the to, to go on tour but like halfway in um like we were all running out of money and it was like ah oh, fuck like we have to like we have like this many more shows to play like i can't let us like starve and die you know so i sold a guitar um but uh it's fine guitars are just things um anyway i totally forgot the question that i was answering uh it was about the set oh yeah so radio silence was just like the easiest song <laughs> i'm so sorry i'm a yapper oh, don't, don't even um, worry about it um so radio silence was just the easiest song that we could teach isaac in in the shortest amount of time like while we were on the road so the first time we ever played that song together was literally in chicago like before mm -hmm. even like practicing it as a band you live streamed uh chicago i think i did didn't i yeah i yeah which ones i live streamed yeah uh but anyway uh, radio silence right Oh, sorry. No, I was. I thought you were gonna say something. Oh, I would, oh, I, <laughs> no, um, <laughs> but um, radio silence. Yeah. So short amount of time. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just that bad. song had. Like, I would not have picked that song if it were up to me. It was just like, ah, uh, like we just dropped the song out of the set list. And I have to pick something. This one's easy. Uh -huh. What would you have picked? Oh, if I could have, if I had it my way. It would have it would have either been uh it would have either been prescribed whatever uh or avoiding the issue uh by the way you uh so prescribed whatever wasn't on the uh set and I'm, I'm not complaining about that i was just like uh oh you can complain it's uh, fine no, no i'm <laughs> not complaining at all i'm absolutely happy with you know the the show at, at, you know whatever uh that was it was a blast i was just wondering like uh was uh was that going to be on the set list or was that ever performed or? Um, I wanted to put it on the set list. It was just, it like basically like the set list came out of like the necessity to teach somebody a lot of songs in a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Um, prioritizing which ones I think needed to be played. Yeah. You know, as well as like listening to my band on like which ones they would want to play. Um, um, I guess we could probably start, you know, closing out the interview. Um, so, a couple of final questions here. Um, so, has your, uh, musical, you know, your musical endeavors, how has that affected your personal life? Uh, greatly. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, I mean, like, the thing is, is, like, when you make 
when you kind of make something a significant portion of your life, it affects every aspect of your life. You know, like um, it affects like the kind of people that you surround yourself with. It affects the kind of things that you look for in people. Like, you know, I'm, I don't know that I have a satisfying answer to that question because there are just too many things that I can name, you know? Like my personal life is completely affected by the fact that have, I have you uh or is music your job now? Uh no, I have a day job still. Um <laughs> um during you know, when I'm at home during the day I actually work for a uh, software development company. Oh. Oh nice. I've always wanted to be IT. Yeah, well I mean you wanna be IT until uh people start asking you IT questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I mean, no, it's, it's, it's a good place to live. It's, that's just kind of a, you know, do you, do you know how to code? Uh, yeah, sort of. Um, so like, I don't really do it. I, I, uh, right now I'm working on like an internal product for our company. I'm not super at liberty to say like what it is oh, or what it does worry. or anything. I don't even worry about, you know, describing it. <laughs> for sure. I mean, like, but I mean, basically like, you know, it's just like, basic not basic but i mean it's like javascript and like all of the frameworks around that like you know obviously react is a big one um uh we do we're we're i'm learning a little like i'm learning typescript because it's just it turns everything into like a fail safe um which has been pretty nice but also incredibly frustrating to like try to pick up on um, but, uh, I mean, things like that, uh, obviously HTML and CSS are a given, you know, um, instead of using like bootstrap, we're using tailwind. Uh, I'm, are you familiar with anything I'm saying right now? Or, uh, I know, uh, I like your funny words, magic man. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, like, it's all just like frameworks that you use within, javascript and html and css in order to like make uh internet software applications uh do you typically do you use javascript more than uh do you use like javascript more than python for your web development or is it kind of like java python and uh, so i don't HTML know python. Or, well you don't i don't know any python um you don't know any I, python no no um if i were to like say there's something that everybody should learn um and i am not the expert at this at all so take what i say with a grain of salt i think i think people should learn python right now because like python is mostly used in like data and data analysis and like all of the like big data is kind of the big thing right now you know mm -hmm. so like yeah. If you're gonna learn, and also like Python is just like very close to like a lot of people who do who code with Python say that they really like it because it's like the closest to human syntax that, that any uh, any like programming language has gotten. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think I again don't quote me, but I think that it's like a derivative of like C languages, like C plus C or C plus plus C sharp, you know. Um, which are like pretty heavy duty stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean like data kind of seems to me like where it's right now. So Python is really good. For All right. And um, uh, second to last question. Uh, so what are some ideas floating around for your next project? I know you did mention a couple ideas for some songs, but do you want to go in depth or tell us what you can? Uh, as far as like the next record? Yeah. Oh, um, the songs are picked out. They just have to be recorded. And, uh, that's on me. I, I decided I was going to take like a week to just like relax after tour. Oh yeah, no, that's um, totally fine. <laughs> yeah, because this, this year is just kind of, yeah, I mean, this year and last year was just kind of like, ah, there's like one thing after another and I haven't like had a moment to like breathe. So I decided that I was going to like take that moment, um, this week and I kind of had it but kind of don't, but that's fine. You know, that's fine. We're rocking and rolling. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm basically going to be starting to record this next record here pretty soon. Um, I have ideas of stuff that I want to do with it as far as like, 
marketing and like, you know, like uh, reaching out to like management and agents and stuff. Horror ARG. But, huh? Do a horror ARG. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I've got like some like very loose uh, ideas of like creative direction. Mm -hmm. Um, like I really want to use the colors pink, purple, and orange specifically because those are only because those are the colors of the Yoshi's from uh, Super Mario Sunshine, and I always liked that. <laughs> right, do you have a? Do you have like a? Are you allowed to tell us like the album title? Uh, I I would love to, but I don't have a title yet. Uh. I've been workshopping a bunch of them, and like the labels just kind of like <laughs> they oh, yeah. phrased. You told a... me you told you told uh you told uh on a recent interview is like you came up with prescribed whatever you had a ton of ideas like a. An oh yeah, no, no, no. They came up with prescribed yeah. whatever because I had a ton of ideas and none of them were good. Because <laughs> you mentioned like God is canceled, and I like the first one better. Um, do you do you remember any of the other? Do you remember? A little bit? Do you remember any other ones? No, I I don't remember any of the other ones. I remember that they were all just like, because like, I really want to name it something silly, you know? Um, like, I, oh man, I'm actually, I'm, I'm sitting at my computer right now. I'm going to like bring up the document uh, uh, for like album titles because I, <laughs> uh, for, for, this, for this next one. I don't. I do not remember any of the ones I had for prescribe whatever. Like that shit is lost to time. Um, but uh, I do have like uh, if you, if you'll bear with me for like oh, yeah. a minute. Oh, there it is. Record titles. Let's all see. Right, all right. Uh, let's. All right. Uh, I just want to address. I just want to apologize to I Surrender Records. Um, I you know any NDAs that he may have signed are just thrown out the window now. So. Oh, I ain't signed shit. Oh, you, you haven't. <laughs> you don't sign NDAs. No, no. Um, mostly, mostly when it's like I shouldn't talk about this thing. It's more of like a respect to the process and like a respect to their wishes. But they have not made me sign any NDAs. That's that's actually kind of cool. That's uh, it's kind of yeah, cool. yeah. No, like they they are a seriously cool team to work for. Uh, anyway, so. I have, uh, here's just a bunch of iterations of, uh, one title that I had. The Long and Tiresome Search for Substance. The Long and Annoying Search for Substance. The Long and Tedious Search for Good Vibes. The Long and Tiresome Search for Fucks I Give. <laughs> the Long and Arduous Search for Good Times. Um, and then, uh... Rob jokingly said, why don't you name it Debbie Downer? And I was like, D down. Uh, so we got Debbie Downer, Deborah D. Downer. <laughs> um, if it, I, I wrote down, I don't want to name the album after a song. But if I did, I would name it after this song that I have called Still Dumb, Still Rock and Roll. Um, which would be a sick title, yeah, but I don't want to name it. Yeah, I know. I just don't, uh, it yeah, feels no, lazy to like, me. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine too. Um, I've got, uh, Little Fish in an Infinite Pond. That's stupid. That's dumb. Why the fuck do I say things? In an infinite pond. I love that. Um, I love that. I've got, I've got Good Luck Out There with an exclamation point, which I kind of like. Cause it's silly, and then I've got in all caps, big sick, hell yeah. <laughs> um, um, I think that this is this is just a, a workshop exercise yeah. in in why. Basically, this is a big uh, a big lesson in why Matt Instagram should not name records. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that, that's perfect. Um. But uh, otherwise, uh, I think I have. Nope, that's that's uh, all the questions I have. Um, well, uh, thank you for coming on the show, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, 
thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, I kept it under two hours, thankfully. Nice. So... <laughs> we did it. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you for watching my first interview I've done in like a year. I hope to do more. I hope school doesn't drown me in homework, but I'm going into sophomore year, so I don't expect that to get any better. Um, do you want to have, do you have any last, any last things you want to say before I end? Uh, don't trust the government. Listen to Matt's Instagram. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, I will see you guys next time. Uh, goodbye.